Australia is famous for its diverse cast of bizarre creatures, from venomous beaver ducks to 20-foot crocodiles, but sadly many of its strangest animals have been lost to time. Such as the thylacolio, also known as the marsupial lion and largest carnivorous mammal ever found in Australia. It evolved into a wombat, but regardless of this interesting choice of an evolutionary path, its bizarre teeth are probably the strangest aspect of its design. Possessing a set of needle-like canines and a row of molars that are essentially melded together into a single blade-like wedge, performing the function of a dental guillotine. And none of this is to mention the massive hooked claws it kept on the ends of its opposable thumbs, believed to be used as tools of disembowelment. So either it was a dangerous disemboweling apex predator, or maybe it ate cucumbers. A lot of people looked at this terrifying cat monster and reached a wide variety of conclusions. Some people, like Sir Richard Owens, assumed the former, claiming it was the fellest and most destructive of the predatory beasts. While others thought it was a scavenger that ate crocodile eggs, and others still thought its diet primarily consisted of sea cat nuts and native Australian cucumbers, giving rise to what would soon be known as the melon munter theory. And look, I get it, this thing's teeth are crazy, and there's a lot of conclusions we can draw from that, but at the same time, Molars are famously good at chewing plant material, and that's exactly what this thing lost when it turned its face into a giant pair of scissors. So maybe, just maybe, it stopped eating plants. There's also the issue of its giant death claw, which sure could have been used to climb trees rather than slicing and dicing the local wildlife, but cucumbers grow near ground level, so what's Mr. Melon Muncher doing in a tree? So yeah, I lean a little closer to agreeing with our good friend Sir Richard Owens, but at the same time, I'd say that most destructive of the predatory beasts is a little overkill. On the one hand, yes, it's been estimated they could probably kill stuff up to 15 times quicker than a lion, but on the other hand, I think I'd have a much better chance of taking this thing in a fight than, like, an Allosaurus or something. Speaking of Allosaurus, let's talk about dinosaurs. Massive, scary claws seem to be a bit of a motif for dead Australian animals, since two of their biggest theropod dinosaurs are notable in large part for the giant javelins at the end of their fingertips. In fact, their biggest theropod, a 2,000 pound behemoth called the Megaraptora, was even given the nickname Lightning Claw for its aforementioned talons. But despite sounding like a mid-century superhero, the title for best nickname is going to have to go to the second largest theropod. A six and a half foot tall butcher with partly opposable hands tipped with serrated claws. It was officially called the Ostrobinator, but colloquially known as Banjo. Silly nicknames aside, there are countless ways for a creature to curdle blood. Sure, being a big scary monster with big scary claws is an effective way to achieve that goal, but oftentimes the path of the uncanny can bear just as fruitful of results. Take the short-faced kangaroo, also known as the Prosopticon Goliath to his friends. This guy was essentially just a bigger, beefier kangaroo, with bigger feet, a boxier frame, and as the name implies, a shorter, almost humanoid face. They went extinct relatively recently, around 30,000 years ago, and for reference, humans first reached the island well over 50,000 years ago, so the two groups did get the chance to coexist for a while. This resulted in a handful of aboriginal myths about giant kangaroos with the faces of men. And just to hammer this point home, when I say giant, I mean they were over 9 feet tall. That's big. But as much as I love to imagine this enormous, bulky mass hopping whimsically across the Australian outback, it turns out the extra 400 pounds makes the whole long-distant leaping thing a little difficult. Instead, scientists have mostly found adaptations that suggest they walk with more of an upright posture. You know, kind of like a person. So just in case the human face wasn't enough for you, they gotta walk like us too. I really hope my earlier description of uncanny is starting to sink in for you. Speaking of sinking, if you look back far enough, you'd see that countless parts of modern-day Australia were found deep beneath the water leaving us with the fossils of several subaquatic terrors, such as the Cronosaurus Queenslandicus. I'll give you one guess as to which part of Australia was found. This 12-ton menace was the largest known plesiosaur, a fact it used to joylessly ravage the depths of the Yeramanga Sea of inland Australia. With ruthless precision, it devoured everything from miscellaneous fish to giant squid and maybe even the occasional Mosasaurus and Ichthyosaur, both of which were fellow carnivorous reptiles and nearly twice the size of our Queenslandic friend. So yeah, a bit more destructive than the thylacolio. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but I could probably make a whole video on ancient marine life if anyone's interested. Also, let me know what you think of the new style with me and the green screen. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and it's a lot less animation, which means more videos more often for you guys, if you like it. Floor finders from last week, of course, include Sam Sam 2 and the Sneezy Afton guy, but also Ender, Crimson Art, and Zigrastical, who was the first to find the igloo and music note portions, which were the most well-hidden in my opinion. 
Honorable mentions should also go to the Happy Nihilist and Tackless C, who both did a pretty good job, but were just a couple minutes too late. Along with Nate the Cod and Azuria, who both found first floors in previous videos, but didn't get the shout out they rightfully deserved. Anyway, if you find any this time, let me know in the comments down below or on my Discord server. Link in the description. And until next time, don't die. See you later.